So I'm back with a Golf here. Um, they've got a engine management light on, as you can see right up there, still on now. And I'm just going to scan it and see what fault codes we've got with it. So I've got the Finco Euro Max plugged into it. It's done an automatic VIN recognition of it. Uh, just going to go to read data trouble codes. Similar one glow plug circuit. Brilliant. Okay, so what we could do now is we'll trace where the glow plugs are located. Should be fairly simple on this. Some are a bit worse than others, and then we will test them and see what we've got. What I've done, I've just removed the top engine cover. As you can see, I've just put over there. And I found the glow plug. So we've got cylinder one there, two there, three and four. On these, cylinder three is a pressure glow plug, so that will register the pressure coming out of the cylinder and report back to the ECU. Just helps with running controls and keeping everything eco-friendly with the running. So what we're gonna do now is just disconnect the plugs and I'm gonna test, so we know cylinder one's got fault, but I'm gonna test it against cylinder two using a resistance test and see what we've got. You can normally test these in situ. See down there, I've just cleaned the, clean the um, hole out where it's sitting in there so no debris goes down if I take them out. But yeah, this is a bit tight, so what I'm gonna do is just remove them. Remove cylinder one anyway, because that's the tightest one against this fuel rail pipe there. And then I'm going to show you a little resistant test of how we can do it and see if we determine it, if that's why it's failed. So I've got my multimeter here and I've set it to a 200 ohms uh, setting. And I'm just going to check the multimeter. So I put them two together. Uh, so there we go. So we know we've got continuity, so the multimeters are working okay. So what I'm going to do is. Put this lead there on where the glow plug would air, and this one where it would get power. And what we've got is an open circuit in that glow plug, so that glow plug is completely malfunctioning. What? So what I've done is I've got a similar two glow plug out now, so we know this one has no fault on it. Uh, it's looking a bit cruddy there, but the computer recognises no fault with this car, so I've got it set to an home setting again. I've just used a crocodile clip there just to make it easy to hold for the video. With the same principle, going to check resistance and the circuit. So uh, that's on the earth side of it, and then this is where the power would be. Let's check. Check the settings, find out. There we go, and that's at a zero or probably about. There we go, what we got there? It's just stabilising. There we go, so one ohms. So you, ideally you don't want to see anything more than six. If you've got more than six, chance of the glow plug's got too much resistance in it. So what I've done now is I've got a similar one, two and four pulled out, and at the customer's request he would like us to change all three of those. The reason why it's so important to catch the, this sort of fault early is not only do I help with um, cold starters, so this will preheat, the glow plug will preheat the cylinder, um, so you, you, the start will be a lot easier on a compression or diesel, diesel engine. Also, these glow plugs and the pressure one that's in there, so all four of them, when the car wants to uh, do a regeneration of its DPF, so heat it up and clean all the shit out of the DPF, you pardon my French, that will um, use these to heat the engine really hot and get it up to a temperature where it can burn all the crud off. So really important to catch these early, otherwise you can end up getting DPF dogs. Thanks for watching.